Okay, so we are in our final episode of our season 2.5 of Finding Common Ground. And this is the last episode of Leading from the Messy Middle, where we get to speak to millennial middle managers and get some real insights into what's working, what's not working and what's going on. And if you're a leader from the top, Lots of stuff to learn from here. If you're listening and you're in the middle management, we're hoping that you'll find like some resonance, some connection and some like joining of dots of like, yep, that is my experience. So uh, I am going to share occasional like views from where I'm leading at the top, but I want to spend most of the episode again, handing over the mic to Azrin from the middle, because I think we don't get to hear enough of voices from the middle. And right now, I'm going to shut myself up and over to you, Azrin. <laughs> Go. <laughs> uh, six episodes in and I don't, I'm not used to it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, for this final episode, we have Kun Liang. Um, Kun Liang is a middle from a charity here yes. in our building as well. And I think I want to start with the experience of a middle in a small team. Because we have that in common. I'm not, um, CG is not a charity, mm. but we are a relatively small mm. team. And there isn't a lot of people in between the ED and the middle. Yes. <laughs> there isn't anybody really. <laughs> so that is a very interesting um, experience to have. And I wanted to ask you about what that's like for you as a middle flying a bit close to the sun <laughs> and the sun being <laughs> your oh, ED. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it sounds... Really interesting, right? Um, the fact that I started as a fresh graduate and I'm in this situation, a very, very interesting and also to me is playful, right? Because um, I, I think I, I was thinking about this idea of uh, who am I in this space um, where I'm considered a media manager, but I, I don't have someone that I manage, you know, uh, in the team. Um, but I do work very closely with my executive director and also my fellow colleagues while also leading different aspects of the company, right? Uh, the charity, of course, uh, the charity. And um, I think I think of it in like three layers of um, my work uh, here. It's um, because I, I, I lead the aspect of communications and fundraising and I work very closely with my ED, uh, especially on fundraising. Um, so for, for me, I'm honored because we, we don't just implement things or execute things, um, as instructed. Um, we get to do three things, right? The first one is to, um, form the dot, right? To create the dot that we want to see, um, be it, um, the work that we do, um, or, um, the kind of things we, we want, the conditions we want to build in, in the work that we do. Um, and then we get to um, join the dots. Right. Right. So the, the dot is there, we see other dots, and then how do we go about forming those dots? Um, you know, be it working with new partners or deepening the existing relationship with our old partners, for example. Uh, and of course, the people that we, we serve, right? The communities, for example. And then last thing, we also get to deepen the dot together. Right. So it's not just about forming relationships and I leave. Mm. Right. It's about being there to implement it, um, to see the impact. Mm. And then if things doesn't go well, we're there to follow through. Um, so often much um in, in my other experiences in other workplaces, um, I always am the one at the last stage where I'm the dots are formed and then right. so you're at the bottom of the barrel <laughs> yeah and then um, I'm just told what to do right right and it's very specific right you're given two tasks for today mm -hmm. and you finish it and then you actually don't know what happens next right. right so I submit certain things or I present certain things and I'm never told about what's the impact I'm creating in the work that I do mm -hmm. right be it a proposal I'm writing or um a presentation I'm making right mm -hmm. I I don't know who who is receiving on the other end, mm. right? And what is the review process like at the top, mm. right? But in Playum, um, which is the charity I'm working at right now, and um, uh, I get to see the impact mm. and I get to see for myself the feedback from the communities. Mm. And because I'm also on the ground at the work um, uh, for the programs, for example, I'm lucky to have the chance to, um, I get to see what works and what doesn't work, mm. right? People who receive um, on the other end or who are with us on the other end, 
um, can tell me directly, you know, whether things work or not. So yeah, it's really like from the start to the end, I'm there. I get to see it. So I enjoy that. So for you, what is the biggest difference between your experience as like the, the ground slash bottom of the, of, of the system of another place that you worked in and like being somewhere in the middle, sometimes even toggling with top like position, like what, what's the biggest uh, difference in experience for you as a person? Mm. Yeah. By nature, I tend to be an overthinker. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have a fair share of those. <laughs> yeah, so um, by, by being in touch with what's happening at the top yeah. uh, and also managing expectations between, you know, the, the, the two spectrums, right? Yeah. Uh, I get to hear a lot more views. Mm. Sometimes views that are very contrasting to my beliefs. Right. Because we are so deep into the work that we do, mm. we use the same jargons, mm. the same language. Um, it's so common and unique to us mm-hmm. and we're so used to it and but when you hear new voices from other places be it at the top or at the bottom then you start thinking about oh do I have to change how I view certain things mm-hmm. or um, it's not working for them so do I still stick to my own beliefs or do I start listening to them more right and uh, some people want I always tell um, my, my, my friends that in my job um, different people have different expectations of the outcomes that they want in the work that we do. So how do I find a balance, right? right. Because I don't want to sacrifice um, what we believe in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, I to get buy-ins from people, uh, I need to listen to them. I need to maybe code switch sometimes, right? To 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 let them know that actually I'm hearing them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the more people I talk to um, from both spectrums, right, of the work, I receive so much, right? Mm-hmm. And the challenge becomes, you know, how do I find that middle ground? How do I find that sweet balance? Mm-hmm. Um, especially in the work that I'm doing, I'm communicating, I'm articulating the, the impact. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm also fundraising, you know, with my team. Um, so I need, I need buy-ins, right? So that's, to me, it's the wonder and also the challenge at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That sounds like a lot. (laughs) As a fellow middle sitting next to you, I'm thinking of, I think what's coming up for Mm. me is, um, while I struggle to navigate the middle internally Mm. with my own, not say team, but in terms of my own Mm. work streams, hearing you manage the middle between not just you, and your up and your bottom, but also you like sideways, your stakeholders, mm. your funders, your beneficiaries, your kids, your yes. educators. And that's a lot of opinions, perspectives, expectations to manage. And to some, and by some I mean me. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us more. <laughs> that sounds more than what you would expect the middle to do. Mm. So how do you kind of come to terms with that in that that's that's what you want and that's okay for you that is beyond what a traditional scope of a middle? Um, I think in my context, I'm, I'm lucky. I always say I'm lucky because I mm. get to be in touch with the work that the organization is doing yeah. uh, before I even start full-time. So I started as a volunteer with Playum um, and then ah, I okay. did an internship for one year. Right. And then I went back to school for a semester and I came back deciding that I want to do a full-time career with okay. Playum. So that two and a, about two years before I turned full-time, that gave me really a good sensing of what is the complexity of the work I'm in it for. Because mm. before I took on the full-time job, I already know what's mm. going to happen. Okay. Right. And I know what's expected of me in yep. this job. And I think the, the candidness and the honesty in the team um, throughout the whole relationship I have with them, mm-hmm. um, they have always been sharing about what they do, mm-hmm. right? So uh, for me, I was I felt well prepared okay. for this complexity. Mm-hmm. But let's say if I'm in going to join a new organization, yes. right? And I'm and you don't have that privilege of studying yes. from the sidelines. Yeah, because I, yeah. I mean, like, I would do my part in terms of reading the job scope, right? Yeah. Very clearly, or asking people in the organization what this job yeah. could be about. Um, but if I were to be taking up the role and I realized that, oh my God, this is the complexity. And (laughs) and then um, I think having that strong social support is so important. I need to be very honest with my team, Mm. right? Hopefully they're also as honest as I want them to be uh, because sometimes it's really beyond our control. And so I think um, speaking about expectations is so important. That's what I learned in the job that I do right now. Mm. It's always the back and forth. 
And I was reading up, right, uh, about um, how you, as a fresh graduate, you you navigate mm. this workplace, the world of workplaces. Uh, it's about how to say, sometimes saying no to certain things, um, but respectfully. Mm. So that's that's an art itself, right? Yeah. Because it's so difficult to say no to your boss sometimes yeah, or to yeah. your team. Um, but um, when the work is so complex, I think you all the more you need to be very honest and candid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So maybe you can help me, like, could you paint uh, our listeners? Uh, what is a picture of I'm just trying to survive mm-hmm. as a middle here versus like I am actually quite thriving mm-hmm. as a middle? And let's say circumstances are exactly the same. It, it's still a lot of work. It's yes. very complex. Mm-hmm. But what does I'm just trying to survive here look like? And what does thriving like I'm quite like doing pretty good? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, What's the so, difference? Yeah, I've been thinking about it, right? Because uh, surviving to thriving, right? Mm-hmm. It's a spectrum, it's a journey. And uh, for me, one thing that makes me feel like I'm thriving in the workplace is where um, I embrace the fact that things are always changing mm-hmm. and that um, we're always experimenting. And when failures happened, we know how to, you know, come together and solve that problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Um, did you just blank out? <laughs> it's okay to blank out. <laughs> <laughs> I just blanked out. <laughs> it's okay. It's part of leading in the messy middle. <laughs> <laughs> I totally just literally blanked out. <laughs> um, That's okay. Just collect your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not about thriving, yeah. right? And um, it's also about um, people around you um, showing that they're vulnerable as well. Mm. Um, I tend to share a lot about um, what I struggle with, uh, even to my colleagues, right? Uh, to my boss as well. Um, sometimes I fear that if I were to leave this organization, I might never find another one that mm-hmm. can be so embracing. Mm-hmm. Um, it helps me actually, it's interesting, it helps me actually to know that everyone, be it you're at the top or, you know, on the ground mm-hmm. or you're the middle management, um, you're open about the struggles you have. Yeah. Yeah. And even the children that we work with, um, mm-hmm. when they see us acknowledging our vulnerability and the things that we are not so good at, yeah. but we always say that we are in the process of learning, yeah. um, then they start to open up, right? So it's just something magical about the relational connection we have mm-hmm. in our work because it's so human. Yeah. Our mm-hmm. work is so human. We are not turning out data or writing numbers mm-hmm. uh, only, right? It's mm-hmm. a lot about how we relate to people. Yeah. And, and and based on what people say or do, the decisions we make together, that really shifts the whole work that we do. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. I think a common theme that's coming up for me is that regardless of where you are, the difficulty you are facing, the confusion you feel internally, having the team mm. as a support system is almost like yeah. gold star. Yes. That's that makes everything else so much easier. Mm. And I also want to circle back to something that you said about, you know, saying no is hard. Mm. And I think that's mm. also a big part of the learning in the earlier early career. You know, it's not just the technical skills. It's not just yeah. learning how to PM. It's mm. not just learning how to use Excel sheets super coolly or whatever. Mm. It's learning the people skills. It's mm. learning the soft skills. And that is something that I never knew I had to do. Mm. Yes. Until I came here. Yeah. <laughs> what I've learned yeah. is um, yeah. being intentional about check-ins yeah. is very, very important. Yes. I think sometimes uh, if people don't say, you don't ask, or if you don't, if you think that if people don't ask you, you don't say. So it's always about the mind game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but what I'm experiencing now in my current workplace is where we are very intentional about check-ins. Yeah. Where mm-hmm. we make it a point, um, let's say we come together for a meeting, we, we check in with one another how you're feeling today. Yeah. Um, you can share yeah. about something that you, you have done or you're facing in yeah. your personal life. Yeah. Of course, if you're willing to share, right? Within boundaries. Yeah, it could yes. be with your family members or something happy that happened yeah. or you went for this very nice conference and, you know, it helps you personally. Yeah. Or uh, it could be at work, you are facing some um, pro- uh, issues with your partners, how to communicate that with them better because yeah. it affects you personally as well. And we make it intentional to check in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always about asking, not just how are you, but, you know, what, what's going on. Yeah. Uh, I see that, you know, you're doing this, you know, yeah. can I come in to help? So um, there's a lot of all these 
conversations about how can we support one another mm-hmm. because we are a small team back to the small team yeah. right yeah. Uh, you know I, I, I look at communications, marketing and fundraising, for example, but I don't do all the communications work, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't do all the fundraising work. Um, there are times where um, different members in the team come in to support, yeah, right? So it becomes very agile. I think agile is the word that we always use that mm-hmm. our team is so agile, yeah, right? We can come in to help out because sometimes things do happen. Life do happen, right? Yes. And if I'm not around or someone else is not around and need help, uh, we're always ready. So it's that spontaneity, that agile. Yeah. 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 And I do acknowledge that this is a pre- a working preference yes. that we work in a space that is agile mm-hmm. and fluid and mm-hmm. almost a flatter mm-hmm. hierarchy structure. Mm-hmm. And that's not necessarily something that other people might want. Yes. Uh, some people might want structure and there are days where I feel like I just sometimes want to be told what to do. Just tell me what yes. to do. <laughs> I don't want to be the one drawing the dots. Yeah. I resonate. I also want to share that as well that uh, sometimes I do close my eyes and dream about what if one day I sit at my desk and I only receive two emails a day telling me this is what your task do, is for the day. Because that happened to me in other workplaces I used to intern at, right? Yeah. Um, that I'm given tasks to do. And then I can go for tea break at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. <laughs> you know, very structured, right? Every day for me is like that, right? It's in my office. Yeah. yeah, it's very predictable. Yeah. I know the, the workload, you know, right. it will never be too much or too little. Yeah. It's quite constant, right? Uh, or when I hear stories from my friends saying that, oh, you know, today I have nothing much to do. <laughs> What's that like? Yeah. <laughs> you, you had that life though. I had that life, right? Yeah. So but what did that feel like? I thought something was missing. Mm. Because I always felt that I... Um, I want to be part of that work. Right. But I was never part of the work. Yeah. Um, I'm doing something that is, you know, of a choice of someone else, which I don't agree with sometimes. And it makes me very difficult. Makes it very difficult for me to yeah. to to execute. Yes. Because I, I don't understand the rationale behind what I'm doing. Mm. Right. So the fact that I'm never like, Subject to someone's stupidity. Yeah, so that's <laughs> nice. I mean, it doesn't mean that, you know, I, I, I say something and everyone will follow what I yeah. say. But it's that conversation. Yeah. Right? The, the oh, no, I don't agree. Uh, why? Uh, maybe this is not right. You can why? weigh in. Yeah, Yeah, I can weigh in. And uh, yeah. we always have this conversation, even with um, our executive director, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, we come together, we talk about yeah. things. She respects our expertise yeah. or our knowledge and certain things. Yeah. Um, and sometimes she actually make it, I yeah. mean, my inference is that sometimes she she put herself back a little bit to yes. say that I want to listen to my team's view first, yeah. right? Because we're all very excited about the work. We all yeah. want to share our voice. But uh, there are times where each of us, we will step back a little bit to yeah. hear the voices of others. And then we come in to share our yeah. view. So that comes with chemistry as well. Yeah. yeah. But I do, yes, I do dream about one day. <laughs> what if, you know, I can just sit at my desk and <sighs> tell my friends, WhatsApp them and say, Hey guys, how are you? Um, I think like much happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do that at night because like, you know, like if I sleep, right? But you know, sometimes, yeah, I do dream about yeah. that. There's, the grass is always green on the yeah. other side, yeah. no. right? And um, yeah, I mean, it's also difficult to fi- find a balance sometimes because in life, there's no never a perfect 50-50, mm. right? It's either sometimes you go for like 95 mm. or you go for like 40, mm. right? So when you're at 40, what do you do to make your your day a bit more enriching yeah. when you are at 95 how do you still regain your sanity mm-hmm. <laughs> right so it's about adapting yeah yeah. Adapting. yeah so they can thrive in both situations i resonate with what you said about the something is missing thing yeah. so obviously daydream is daydream right yes but so Cam, Cam always, I always tell Cam, Cam, you know what, like tomorrow, I'm going to go into like some cushy <laughs> job and just do nothing. <laughs> and then Your boss is here. <laughs> See, again, so much psychological safety. So much. Yes, I mean, Leah is a safe space. <laughs> and Cam, Cam always checks me and she says, you say only, but yeah. you, you'll hate it. You'll be mm. so you'll be so miserable in Mm. in that space and Mm. you'll be so upset. And I obviously know she's right, but you can always dream. Mm. (laughs) The grass is always green on the other side. But yeah, I I think that's a very important part of like that conversation, Mm. right? The whole knowing what you want and finding that meaning in what you do. Mm. It's almost like what's worth it? What's the cost you're willing to Mm. bear? And if the cost of... The complexity is the thing that we are willing yeah. to pay for and bear, then 
that is what we mm. are here to do. La. Yes. Yeah. But I must say sometimes such dreams yes. actually <laughs> anchors us a little bit sometimes. Mm. You mean the, the the dream of like, I don't want to work anymore kind of dream. Yeah, like I, I just want to like uh, receive instructions and do and then uh, I yeah, leave yeah. at 6pm on the spot. Oh, don't worry. I have that fantasy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because I, I, it's interesting because I think about it, it anchors me a little bit to say that Oh, am I thinking about this because I'm yeah. burning out soon? Yeah, or yeah. Or there's something about my job that I'm not enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking about this so hard tonight, right? When I sleep. Mm. And then I start to reflect a bit more and yeah. say, okay, I still enjoy my job. It's, I'm still passionate about it. But maybe it's some, this part of my work needs some working. Ah, right? How I pro- yes. approach it. Um, yeah. Am I doing it um, you know, in, in a way that is making it more difficult? Yeah. Right. So to me, such dreams are sometimes a very helpful anchor. It's like a reality check. Yeah, but yeah. don't let it dream too long, right? <laughs> <laughs> because you'll become reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, it, it helps me to to anchor um, mm. myself a little bit. Yeah. That it's like, um, oh, maybe I'm burning out. Yeah. yeah. Right? That's why I'm making such a dream and, and how do I help myself a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. So to me, that's a, yeah. hey, you, you know? Yeah. Time to sit down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I agree with that. I definitely know where my daydreams stem from <laughs> in that <laughs> I am, yeah, as we've um, explored in the past conversations that I am in a weird transitionary, transitionary mm-hmm. phase of being bottom, now moving mm-hmm. to middle and middle exploring a lot of complexity. Yes. So mm-hmm. in the discomfort of that, the quickest and easiest way to get out of it is to leave. And I am aware that that is where it stems from. Mm. And not to say that I want to leave, but it's more so like the idea is there and Mm. the quickest, it's almost like a coping mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. I think we talk a lot about our internal thoughts and reflection about um, this um, situation of us being in the minute measurement role. Um, But I'm just wondering, Azreen, like question for you, right? (laughs) Put me on the spot. um, There is also this external factor. Mm. Right. How do we articulate what we do to people? Oh. Could be your parents, could be oh your loved ones, could be your friends. <laughs> How do you articulate to them that this is the work I'm doing, mm. right? Um, with all these conditions I'm receiving. Um, because to them it might not be justifiable. Mm. Right. To them it might not be understood. So how do we navigate that? Mm. Yeah, because that's something that asks also. Yeah. Just wondering what your thoughts is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So if it's not a good day or if it's a day that mm-hmm. I don't really care, mm-hmm. I'll just be like, I'm doing marketing, like full stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that doesn't fully encapsulate everything yes. that I do or everything that, not just me, but by extension, mm-hmm. the organization mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to explain it to people because this is something we talked about in, um, I think our previous season as well. Not everybody cares. Yes. Not everybody cares to understand fully what it, that is so it's always the matter of kind of dancing around and seeing is it you want to know more is it you really mm. care or is, do you just ask for the sake of asking mm. so i i think we as we move into the different years and different seasons of cg we slowly learn to articulate what um, we do as an mm. organization but i think for me in my capacity today what i would say i do is i create things to help people explore and understand a part of themselves that they may not have been acquainted with before. Mm, okay. Yeah. And that in itself is a bit abstract, <laughs> but I would say that that is the essence or that's yeah. the motivation and intent of whatever it is that I do. Yeah, mm, yeah I think I, I, it's interesting that you mentioned about the fact that not everyone cares about yeah. what you do. Yes. Right. Because um, that is the kind of hole sometimes I get myself into where right. I'm so passionate about what I do. Mm. My mind tells me that I need to like speak it out, like blast it out to everyone that I yeah. see, right? This is the work that we do because, and also because like the genre of my work is I need support from people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then that's when I also learned that different people requires different way of expressing mm-hmm. or articulating uh, what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, so to some people, uh, I would just say I'm working in a children's charity. Yeah. Right. And so people, the children that we work with are from certain backgrounds and we bring in play any arts, for example, mm-hmm. simple as that. Yeah. Right. Um, but if it's someone that I feel um, uh, is genuinely interested in the work that we do, then I'll go mm-hmm. a bit further to say that, you know, these are some of the gaps that we see, yeah. you know, in the work that we do. Um, maybe, 
you are the one who can support or maybe show me the money <laughs> yeah yes yes so sometimes I oh my god that I mean that comes to the point where I spoke with Ashwin about how porous sometimes our job can be yeah. where um if I were to go to a museum on a random Saturday afternoon, yeah. I'm not working, but then I see a poster that can inspire our work, I'll take a photo and then I'll share. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, guys, we could do this, mm-hmm. right? Or like uh, if I talk to someone and that person say, oh, my uncle uh, is working in a family foundation. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, <laughs> who is he? Where is he from? <laughs> Which foundation? Can I write down the name? How do you spell the foundation's name? Right? So the the work that we do is so like, mm-hmm. Uh, like so close yeah. to us that um, I feel to forget that sometimes people just want just one sentence from you yeah. right? Yeah. and then that's enough for them mm. right and only if they ask for it then you, you yeah. will explain a bit more for my sanity sake as well right because right. I'm an introvert so I, I, I go back home and sleep and I recharge and I come to work 100% or 200% every time I present to people about Playum or like the work that we do mm. oh the energy is just like you know, drops by a lot because it takes so much to to share a piece of your life with yeah. people. So, and not just a piece of your life, but to some degree, a piece of your heart. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then uh, it goes back to like different target audience, different yeah. language, different right. um, depth of, 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 you know, sharing per se. Yeah. So, yes. So that's something I need to try to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think what you're sharing is, it, it's really rich because like, even though like, I would say the... This limited series is called like leading from the messy middle, right? And and I I can hear you share a little bit about the messiness and complexity mm-hmm. of the work that you do, but but what is the theme that is floating a lot more to the top is like like a strong sense of like empowerment or thriving, yes. like it, it's messy, but I I'm figuring out my way in it and kind of like enjoying the like dog paddling around <laughs> oh I'm quite organized mess <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like there's, there's a, I was just talking to Ashwin about like that there is this model of like well-being uh, from positive psychology called like the PERMA model and it's like it's basically like there are roughly like five indicators and if you hit all five you're like more or less in thriving zone so one of them is like you do you experience a lot of positive emotions do you experience like engagement like I'm in the flow of things and and actually that's what I'm hearing from your this kind of like flowy integrated yes. personal professional <laughs> kind of thingy right I'm like, I, I can hear that and then there's like positive relationships and I'm very struck by like how we normally think of positive relationships as like the team and that's true like strong positive team relationships but it's also about the positive relationships you're having with your stakeholders your yes. customers your top your like partners and all that and then there's like that's P-E-R-M-A-M is what ah is it mastery? I always forget this. Yeah. A is accomplishment. Mm. I know A is definitely accomplishment. Ah, M is meaning. Ah, okay. Right? And definitely like, yeah, you've been yes. talking about how it resonates with your meaning. And A is the sense of accomplishment, which is about the mastery of the skill set. Mm. And, and what I find really striking about your sharing is like the navigating that jump from I'm from the ground to the middle and now I got to sort of shadow and be a pseudo top occasionally and act like a pseudo top, <laughs> right? Like, ooh, I want that donor, ooh, I want to take this poster yes. and all that, right? Uh, that there is a skill in it, that there is a mastery or a desire to master like this this skill called leadership, mm-hmm. right? And like one of the, the definitions I love about managing and, and leading is like to, to manage is to do all of the work within the boundaries. That means someone has already predefined it for me. It's not my job to go and ask like, what the heck is the boundary? I, I just do the work and follow the email that was sent to me. And mm-hmm. and that's fine. That's a noble work, but you don't go and bug the boundaries. Mm-hmm. But leadership is the work of like, you go on the boundary, at the boundary, through the boundary, you talk about the boundary and let's move it if necessary. And that's that's actually what you are naming all of the time in your sharing, right? It's like, it's the boundaries of like, how are we working right now? It's the boundaries of, oh, we could do like donor funding that way, you know? Yes. So, so there is a lot of like going up to the boundary and like sort of like, let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. Let's address it. And, and I guess we don't normally name that as what thriving looks like. You know, because I think like there's a lot of people who are wondering like, you know, how come I can take off for three weeks in Bali? Mm -hmm. I laid flat. I didn't do anything. I had a great rest. I came back and I'm still in stress mode. I'm still not 
feeling mm. well and like maybe their job doesn't allow them to experience all these things that mm. you're talking about yeah. which is actually key to thriving so it's not so much about the stress levels and the complexity but like does our job actually allow us to experience all of yes. these indicators mm. yeah so I don't know what's like opening up like uh, when I put that on the table mm -hmm. and again I will shut up <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I think uh, what struck me was the A right the accomplishment yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, in the genre of what I'm doing uh, we are always trying to solve a social issue mm. right and social issue is not as simple as I give you five dollars you buy a cupcake and then you're happy mm. right it's about solving things like um, inequalities yeah, it's um, like solving the unsolvable yeah. man yes <laughs> so um, if you come with the mindset that in three years time with Playum yeah. I can able I'm able to solve like a significant problem yeah then I think you're putting yourself in a very um, risky situation where you'll be disappointed yeah because um, there are some minor shifts that can only happen in 10 years yeah yeah right so then the definition of accomplishments will be quite different yeah you have to think about it um, yeah. in the context of um of my work um, yeah how does it look like because it's not about um yeah probably um solving poverty in 10 years right yeah because we have been trying to solve that for decades but yeah. not yet so no yeah, i'm really glad you brought that up because it's i think it's really important to like the the, the well-being of those of us who work in this mm. kind of sector mm. right and and we are also in this sector like like what is it that we're trying to do we're trying to like support like systems to be more whole we want to make we want to get like people to feel more empowered yeah. and more self-aware and that's like it's like it's it's you're, you're attempting to solve the unsolvable <laughs> right yes. be because it's not even your job to solve but it's like your job to just show up and be your small little jigsaw piece mm -hmm. in the universe right mm -hmm. yeah so what does accomplishment actually look like when you have signed up for the cause of let's solve the thing that yes. cannot be solved. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think for, for us, it's looking at very, um, looking at different milestones that we, we, we achieved, right? Yeah. Uh, if there is out of the 10 children that, or 100 children that we, we work with, or 100 families we work with, mm. if there's one family that came to say that, oh my God, you have shifted my mindset about certain things mm. or my attitude towards life and it has changed in certain yeah. ways. Um, wow, that's powerful. Yes. Yeah, because we cannot change everyone, uh, yeah. even though we try to. Um, but if there are certain changes that are seen or felt, yes. I think that is really success, right? Mm. Um, but then, you know, then it's also about the external factor because people um, do expect certain outcomes from the programs that we run. Yeah. So how do you explain to them that sometimes you want ABC to happen at the end of the project, but what if it doesn't happen? You know, will you see our project as successful? Yeah. Right. Um, so there's a lot of like understanding from different stakeholders about the work that we do. You have to experience to see it, to yeah. know it, right? Because um, there are stakeholders who don't come to join our work on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, they are, you know, serving different identity, which is great, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then, then all the more you need to articulate. How do you articulate effectively to them to say that, uh, look, you want this outcome and we also want this outcome, but, mm -hmm. you know... Um, depending on the context, it might not, you know, the, the, the chances of it may not be high. Yeah. Then what counts as success then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think hearing you share about the measure of success um, and immediately sharing on the organizational level mm -hmm. is making me reflect on what I consider measure of success mm -hmm. in my capacity. And mm -hmm. that immediately brings it all the way down mm -hmm. to the intra level. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who is perpetually creating content with, again, the attention of hopefully um, inviting somebody who may not um, have already thought about it mm. to explore a part of themselves that they may not know mm. about. I think my measure of success, while my external KPI, if you will, or like the external expectation is we need to um, spread comms so mm. that we drive sales, mm. for example. And that is a very... <laughs> but I think my personal measure of success mm. is knowing that with each um, piece of content that yeah. we put out not the likes not the comments mm. not the shares but mm. the saves on mm. Instagram mm. because that's the number of people who are saving that yeah. piece of content in their pocket yes. for when they need it yeah. it's like and their first aid kit now it's their first aid yeah. kit now and I think that is what is most mm. that is what pushes me to yes. do what I do. Mm. It's not for 
It's not for the bigger KPI. I can feel some <laughs> emotional <laughs> safety. <laughs> that is the biggest. That's, wow, that's so interesting actually. Yeah. Um, and poignant at the same time because yeah. for someone who, who is doing uh, the work of social media, for example, yeah. right? Communications, yeah. right? The very direct KPI is how many likes do you yeah. have? How many shares? Because yeah. like what if you this work in an agency, what, what, what yeah. the clients want, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but the safe is so important because from my own experience, mm. I like a content. The first thing I do actually is to save it. Not like it. And not like it. Yeah, agree. That's actually, yeah, I realise that's my practice yeah. now. I save a lot of things. You know, I'm, I'm going to out myself and say, I didn't know you could save. <laughs> <laughs> Such a useless Gen Xer. I didn't know you could save. <laughs> Always great to start from today. Oh, I did, didn't know even that was an indicator. <laughs> but yes, we can offer that's the try so that funny. one. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can share with Xiaoyan mm. how many people actually save the post God, I'm doing from the, the useless person doing screenshots. <laughs> I do that too. my photo album. Oh my God, I'm, I'm guilty of that. So I just spoke with uh, a friend and uh, he was saying that I, I do, don't look at my phone album. I'm like, why? And then he said, there's just too many screenshots mm. that I never revisit. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right? But the fact that you're screenshotting means that at a point in time, you felt so emotionally connected with yeah. it that it, either it helps you or yeah. you think it helps the person um, that is close to you. Mm. Right? And that's powerful because then you're spreading yeah. that awareness and knowledge and also the, the impact. Yeah. Right? So... Yeah, I hope yeah. people save my post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think as a fellow like marketing, yeah. social media mm. um, professional, if mm. you will. Yeah. the And especially in the social sector, right? Like there is a want to connect and there's mm. a want to relate mm. to the people that we are reaching out to. Mm. And that goes far beyond what people can see. Mm. And that is the likes and that is the shares. But mm. it's how you move a person yeah. in their individual space. Mm. Is the like you say a lot, like you won't solve poverty in 10 years. But if you mm. can move one person, if yes. one family reaches out to you and yeah. says this is this has mm. impacted me in so and so ways, mm. then that is in my books a win. Mm. But that obviously <laughs> is a personal win. Yes. And an organizational win is a very different conversation. La. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah, because we can't help but to also be mindful about um, the different expectations of different yeah. stakeholders, right? And sometimes um, you have to make compromise, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you feel like, I want to take the risk of persuading them, right? And uh, yeah, it, it, it's proven to work in some cases, right? Mm -hmm. um, just very simply, for example, if, um, because for us, we are about systemic change. Um, we, yeah. we were a lot about direct services, mm -hmm. but we realized that the adults in the lives of children are so important um, that if now, if a teacher asks us to do a workshop for children, we'll often say, would you like to be involved? Yeah. Would you like to co-create mm -hmm. or co-facilitate this with us? Can yeah. your fellow teachers join? Mm -hmm. And then we would also give you um, some resources or some support, mm -hmm. right, for you to bring forth the work so that we can be doing a workshop for our children, but that serves as an experimental ground for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then once you're comfortable, you, you feel empowered, mm -hmm. then please bring on the knowledge and to do the impact on your own. Yeah. Uh, not saying that we won't support you, but it's there's so much the seven of us in the charity can do, mm -hmm. uh, but we can inspire you to to effect change in your own community that's so powerful mm. uh, imagine like uh, as a student my own teacher decided to take upon himself to 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 learn and then to try something new with me it actually is more powerful than getting a vendor to come in to do a program mm. <laughs> right so because it's relational back to relational yeah. right so yeah. I, I think that's the the persuasion we need to make sometimes even in things like that mm. that um we not just want to do this can we offer you another thing mm. and um if you are willing, let's go. And there are some stakeholders who thank us saying that, I didn't know we could do that. Mm -hmm. But only because you you try to persuade us, you give us this idea, I'm bringing this back to my team yeah. and see whether they will support or not. And eventually they did support and yeah. then, you know, something magical happened eventually. Yeah. So sometimes it's about testing yeah. the, the boundary, right? To say that you want A, um, but then like we actually want B more. Mm -hmm. Then can we... Can we still do A for you, but yeah. we include elements of B, right? Mm -hmm. And make it like a nice package. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's how we we advocate. Because mm -hmm. uh, we realize that we cannot push things down people's throat immediately. Mm -hmm. 
I cannot just say, I don't want A. I just want to give you B and then you take B. Yeah. And I tell you why B is so good. But I think you still need to give people the A that they want as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like for, for, for me, like it, even if like one day I don't do the work that I do mm-hmm. and then let's say like I need to go and make money somehow, right? Mm-hmm. I think I, I would find it difficult to remain let's say on the ground mm-hmm. without the skill or, or without the the opportunity mm-hmm. or the capacity to go into middle or top mm-hmm. because of what you're talking about like at the 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 middle and top level is where you start to mm-hmm. like let's go to those boundaries mm-hmm. let's like uh let's address your boundaries mm-hmm. as a client organization or as a vendor mm-hmm. or, uh, like it's all the boundary conversations yes. and that's where all these like little changes can happen, whether it's visible or invisible, yeah. like the, that's like satisfaction mm-hmm. for me. And I think I would, I think that that for me is part of my own equation of thriving. Like mm-hmm. I need to know, like there was meaning in the work that yes. I did. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise it's very like, mm-hmm. otherwise huh. it's just a paycheck la. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Oh, it's like not meaningful enough. Yeah, because you are, you're working on someone else's meaning, right? In yeah, and someone else's meaning could be very like not meaningful at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I also want to validate like, like Astrid, like the, the, you know, when you're saying like, oh no, the social media, the post that I make, like it's all about being saved and not like, well, it doesn't result in a sale. Like if it results in a sale, that is, that's amazing. That's great. <laughs> uh, we, we do want that, definitely. But like the idea that someone saved it and kept it and looked at it, that is part of that um when social sector we call it the 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 double and triple bottom line that we're always trying to aim for, right? Mm-hmm. The, the the money, the meaning, yes. the social impact, the people impact, like all, all of that all comes in la. And I guess like for those of us who are in this sector, yeah, thriving looks like challenging actually. What does success look like? Yep. Yeah. Not just on an individual level, but on a team and org level. And then it's the same question we present back to the system. Like. Yeah. I think on our yeah. sharing about the comms to sales, right? Mm. I guess we have to start somewhere because uh, it always starts with awareness. Yeah. Then eventually it's action. Yeah. I realized that there's so much um, time that needs to be taken for awareness and advocacy to happen. Yeah before the action can take place. Mm. The buy-in, like the true buy-in. Mm. So it's a good start. Yeah. It's really a good start <laughs> because a lot of times we don't even get the awareness yet. Yeah. So yeah. that's very important. Yeah. I'm very thankful for this being our last conversation of the sixth putter. Mm. I think we're ending on a really fulfilling note. Yes. Mm. It's making me remember <laughs> the, nice, <laughs> the nice little pockets of things that I enjoy about my work mm. and I enjoy about what I do for my for 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 work line in my day to day I think it's a privilege to be able to enjoy and find meaning especially so early on in our career mm. and I do resonate with what you said earlier about mm. being so fearful of leaving this is no, not knowing, knowing yes. fully that the next place is not going to be the same. Yeah, that's another novel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it starts. Yeah, yeah, so I think whoever who is out there and are questioning whatever it is that you are questioning about your career, mm. what is one final parting piece of advice you would give to them? Whoa. Um, <laughs> I, I guess... Um, I think what we don't have uh, right now is relief experience. Mm. I think that takes time and you cannot rush it. Mm. But I think what we have right now and hopefully it's still boiling hot is the attitude and mindset mm. towards what we want to achieve. So I, I would say continue the, the attitude and mindset that you feel will bring you far. Mm. And then with live experience, then you would take off. Mm. Um, a lot of times we will, we will face um, external, uh, you know, uh, feedbacks or external values um, that can be contrasting to you, right? But I would say, you know, be your, your your career choice. You know, people would think that it's not justifiable or why you're doing this. Uh, there's somewhere else better for you. I get that a lot, right? There are, there are people who would give alternatives to you. Um, but if there's one 
strong reason for you to stay that overcomes all this 1001, you know, um, alternatives, mm. then that's your reason to stay, mm. right? And give yourself time. I think um, we are in an era where we are so like productive mm. and we are outcomes really soon, right? People start asking, oh, at the end of 10 weeks, what would you achieve? Um, but there are certain things will take three years or five years and you may not be there yet, mm. right? Mm. So I think it's being accepting of the fact that things take time. Yeah. And I think I remind myself every single day because mm. I get to be a bit impatient um, that comes with like, passion in my job, right? Mm. I want things to happen. Yeah. Um, but I think um, people around me do do um, remind me very nicely that, you know, things take time. So yeah, yeah that's my sharing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm, Shao? Well, uh, I'm always a fan of the framework, but uh, <laughs> but but I, I I would love uh, for people to hear this as don't see it as a framework, but see it as a as like five really good questions to ask yourself if you're wondering how do I find out whether I'm really thriving or I'm just merely surviving in the situation in the job that I'm in. Uh, I would go back to that perma model of like, am I experiencing? more positive emotions in this situation or this workplace? Am I experiencing a certain level of engagement? I'm really feeling in the flow of things. Am I experiencing positive relationships all around, not just the team, but with my boss, with my stakeholders and my clients, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Am I getting a lot of my relationships here? Uh, am I getting a lot of meaning and purpose from the work that I'm doing? And am I growing in a sense of accomplishment, mastery or skill set here? Because if you're answering yes to all five, it's a pretty good situation to be in. And of course, you can choose to change whenever that feels right for you. But I think those are five good questions to ask. Mm. I'm saving what Sharon is saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, circling back. Circling back. I think for me, my one advice would be to talk to as many peers as you can. Mm. Because I think what I'm getting out from my conversation with you, Kun Liang, is that we can have a very similar, not similar, similar, but a very similar situation where we are in, mm. but have a very different perspective to it. Mm. And I think what I very much appreciate about being in common ground, and not just the organization, but this building, is that there are many peers from different organizations that we get to chat with all the time. Yes. And even though we are similar in the structure of being a small organization, yeah. we have a very, very different um, team yeah. dynamics. Um, yeah. Some people work with interns, some people work with yes. volunteers, some people are larger and some are smaller. So the middle, the middle manager experience is very different for yeah. each of us. Yeah. And I guess I would also encourage you if you don't know how to start a conversation, use these like six episodes as a as an entry point to starting up a conversation. You know, what is the imposter syndrome experience like for you? What is thriving like for you? What is identity? What is um, you know, um red flags in the space that you should take note of. I think that is all kind of a way for you to start considering what it is that you should be putting on your own checklist. Lah. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean to to I guess to, to bring this to a close. Um yeah, if you are if you are out there listening as a middle manager or a millennial or a top leader, um think of these six episodes as just an opening for a conversation that you may not normally have in the workplace, but you'll be surprised by what people share, not just about their current workplace experience with each other, but their past workplace experiences, yeah. which is a big eye-opener, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. <laughs> right. And what we really hope for this like six-part limited series to do for you is to change something in the way you manage situations and manage people it can be really really messy but there are certain points of clarity and certain principles that you can use to find your little step stones forward yeah and it'll be okay-ish <laughs> it will be it'll be okay-ish <laughs> along the way as long as you like uh get together with people who also want to journey with you yeah 
So I think with that, thank you so much for being with us in this six part series. Love to hear from you. So just direct message us about like anything you felt uh, was really cool and any questions you want to ask. We're always ready to talk to you. Thank you very much. We'll see you in season three. See Yay. you. Bye. 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 Bye.